All right, so Polarium reworked Blessings, and we have not only a bigger PP size, which, by the way, if you guys haven't noticed, our PP size has, has increased. My PP size was at 12 million, and now I have a PP size of 14 million. But they reworked the Blessing system, so now we're getting huge boosts to a lot of our stuff. So, for an example, here, Opardum. Let's look at Opardum real quick. So, like, we're getting an extra 38% crit damage. So if you have a high level blessing, for example, on my nuke Wukong, that's an extra 38% with some extra attack. That's that's insane. Imagine putting that on somebody like Taurus. Like an extra 38 would be huge here, almost at 340, 350. Some Wukong's at three almost 350 for crit damage at 7.2. Like it's just it's just insane. With these blessings, you're gonna want to farm iron twins. Uh, somebody came on stream and told me that, hey, Polarium basically created Centranos and the requirements to have higher blessings, and then they reworked the blessings to make them even better to entice more people to buy soul stones. That's why doing the Iron Twins is going to be that much more important. So that you can collect your mortal soul stones and your coins, and whenever you see something pop up in the soul merchant market, you might be able to buy it. These are what's important, the immortal soul essences, so that you can buy your your blessings up to i think like level four and then from five to six you start using the eternal soul essences but you get that from doing iron twins not the easiest place to farm but again this is sort of more end game and this is the team that i have right here this team again i got from bronco Yo, hey, all hey, these hey, compositions hey, come from bronco hey, i would definitely crazy, go ahead and and uh, give him a like, go check him out. Great content, great guy. Amiable and really nice and giving me tips on how to make my videos better. So huge shout out to Bronco. I'm going to go ahead and run it and then we'll show you, we'll talk you through it. Emic is going to start out by placing the taunt and the unkillable on the entire team. We have Geomancer to place the HP burns. We have Pain Keepers in here to reset the cooldowns on everybody. And then also Emic is going to be resetting people's cooldowns whenever... They get hit with the shield. And then we have Cold Heart to do the enemy max HP move. And this process resets itself and continues the entire time. And this is how you cheese the Iron Twins. This works on all affinities. Uh, as far as getting here to stage 15, there are other comps out there. I haven't really stepped down from doing... This is such a jaded thing for me to say. I haven't stepped down from doing stage 15, yada yada. I was doing stage 14 for quite some time before I saw Bronco's video on how to uh, cheese using Emic. If you don't have Emic, I'm sorry. But this is basically the run here. Pretty decent amount of times. Granted, I do not usually farm Iron Twins that much, except for only on Sundays. And the reason I usually farm Iron Twins on Sundays is because... The Iron Twins, I don't know if it says it right here. Somewhere in here, I think I saw that on Sundays, they have higher drop rates for the Eternal Soul Essences and Immortal uh, Soul Essences as well. So that's usually when I farm Iron Twins, but I know some people who do it uh, on a daily basis. They just don't pay the extra gems for the extra keys. So for Emic, we're using the A, we're prioritizing his A3, then doing the A2. Let me move myself here. Cold Heart is going to be just focusing on using her A3. Same thing with Geomancer, we're turning off his A2, just using Quicksand Grip, his A3, where he reflex damage if you have HP burn on the Iron Twins. Pain Keeper, this is the same Pain Keeper that I use in my clan boss team right here. 51k HP, 250. So it's really nice that you can repurpose the same champion for different content. This is also the same Emic that I use, 271 Emic, 271 Emic, 271 Emic right there too. Also, same Pain Keeper from the clan boss in this Iron Twins team, same one. So that's this Pain Keeper right here, prioritizing the A2, then the A3. And then for Pain Keeper, this isn't fully booked. You don't need to have it fully booked, but what you do need is to have the books all the way up on the cooldown skill cooldown ability needs full books same thing with emic you're going to want to have everything booked out completely as well painkeeper a2 and then the a3 all right let's start off by looking at emic's build so here are the pieces of gear no particular uh, sets needed we're just making sure he has a lot of health but i think it doesn't really matter because the speed will make sure that the unkillable is always up right here the taunted and killable and then with resetting 
with um, MX moves and the Pain Keeper's moves, the unkillable stays up for the most part. No masteries, you don't need to have masteries. Here are my stats. If you want to look at the stats, I guess the most important thing to point out is the 271 speed, high HP. I don't know if that high HP and defense matters though. Let's go ahead and take a look at Cold Heart. Pieces of gear for Cold Heart. Just focusing on making sure we're doing as much damage as we can with her A3. Her Heart Seeker ability. If you get a blessing on her, try Phantom Touch. As always, don't blindly copy masteries, but go ahead and feel free to blindly copy these masteries. And here are the stats. High attack, 224 speed. I've seen people use 223. I've heard 225 thrown around as well. So that is probably the, the parameters that you want to stay within. You could settle for 70% crit damage, but I just went with 100% just because of uh, Phantom Shogun. But the A3 only needs... 70% because you're getting a natural 30%, but if you're doing this, you're probably already in the end game and you already know that. 250 crit damage plus, and that's all we're going to look at for Cold Heart. So for Geomancer, here are the pieces of gear. Geomancer, all we care about is getting the right speed and making sure that we have a decent amount of accuracy. Now the stat requirements, oh, you want to have everything fully booked, so this is landing. I took Heaven Cast to increase the... I thought Heaven Cast ignored Res. Wasn't there... Did they change that? As for Blessings, I don't even know what Blessings to go for right now. Just make sure he's fully booked. Here are the Masteries. If you're struggling to get accuracy, and there is a high requirement for accuracy in this Iron Twins 15 team, you're going to want to take Eagle Eye to get extra accuracy. Go down this tree to get more accuracy as well. Get some extra stats. And Cycle of Magic. Counterattack Masteries if you want to, and uh, all of this good stuff. So the most important stats to look at here are going to be the 254 speed as well as accuracy. You're going to want to aim for 550 accuracy plus, but with my gear, I was not able to do that without breaking some big champions, which I wasn't going to do. So 254 speed, 500 accuracy is working okay with me, but uh, I have seen the Iron Twins get resisted a few times whenever Geo would try to place the HP burn. So try to aim for 550. All right, this is the pain keeper, not leveled, not ascended. You don't need any of that. All you have, all you really care about for pain keeper here is that she's going at 247 speed, and that's it. That's the only stat requirement that matters. 247 speed, not too difficult, but uh, it depends on your gear. I'll just show you guys the pieces of gear that I have, just for those who want to see the pieces of gear. Go ahead and toggle through that. It is important you guys have books. Books matter. You need this move her a3 fully booked out no masteries needed this is my pain keeper the same one that i use for clan boss same one that i use for phantom shogun here are the pieces of gear only caring uh caring about getting the speed requirement fully booked phantom uh, phantom touch here are the masteries Go ahead and look at that. And then here are the speed requirements, which is basically 250. Again, I don't know about deviating from 250. I usually just try to stick to what, what's working, and 250 seems to be what's working. It's a nice and awesome team that does not fail. It's 100% works for all affinities. Look at that, new time, 48 seconds. And if you think you're ready to farm Sand Devil 25, check this video out right here. Oh, 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 oh,